a simple and easy way you can modify a pre-existing STL. I've got the full breakdown for you in today's video and it's coming up next. What's up everyone back at it again it is dw darkwing dead and today we are going to be talking about modifying and customizing a pre-existing stl so obviously like drafting and sculpting and creating stls are i think something that every 3d maker wants to do it's, it's a lot more than meets the eye it's very time consuming uh, it's very in-depth, uh, but today we're not doing any of that. Um, what we are going to be doing is I'm going to show you a very simple program called Windows 3D Builder, uh, where you can actually go in and modify a pre-existing STL. So the main reason for this video is actually to show you how you can take a complete file and break it down into individual files. I'm going to show you specifically on a reptile mask uh, that I've done. There's a couple other things I'll touch on real quick. Uh, you can crop, uh, reshape, resize, add text, all kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna give a quick breakdown, a couple features, ins and outs of it. It's a really great program. So without any further ado, let me show you this reptile mask and how I broke it down. All right, so today we are gonna look at how we can uh, simplify, break down, and separate uh, an STL using Windows 3D Builder. Uh, now disclaimer, this may not work for every STL. It really just depends on how the STL has been sculpted, configured, and meshed. But I have had some pretty good luck with these, uh, separating uh, certain specific parts like the teeth and the gums. Uh, and I'll give you some examples here at the end of the video. If you were to print it like this with all these intricate teeth and gums and everything attached you're going to waste a lot of time with supports there's no guarantee it's going to properly support all this model now this does give you just the mask and then it separates but it keeps the gum and the teeth together and that's still it's kind of hard because if you were to try to sand these or paint these that's just a ton of masking in my case what i want to do is actually print all of these things individually in different colors if you have something like a bamboo or an ams system you could do that but but I don't. I, I refuse to <laughs> buy into that uh, just yet. So that is the complete file, all the teeth and the gums. So you can see it does come pre-separated, so, so that's kind of cool. But uh, what I found is you have the teeth and the gums uh, in one piece. Open this up in Windows 3D Builder. So here is just a small one here. And we're going to click import model. So now the object is here. Now in Windows 3D Builder, you can do all kinds of cool things. See, you can you can scale it, you can change the size. But what we want to do here is when we select the object, we just click on it. You can see it highlights it blue. Now, looking over in the right-hand side here in our submenu, we can see that there is an option that says ungroup. So we're going to click that. And what it does is it actually separates the tooth from the gum. So if we click deselect, and then just select the tooth, we can see that it is now separated the tooth from the gum. So we can actually print those completely separate. We wouldn't wanna just go ahead and print these separate like this, and let me explain why. If you look at how that tooth is recessed in, it goes into the model. Okay, so if we printed it like this and then tried to glue it, 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 it wouldn't sit flush. Uh, it would, probably be a little bit of a pain in the butt. So what we want to do is we've separated the file and that's great. Okay. What we want to do is we want to do deselect. We want to select the tooth and then in the edit option, click subtract and it, see how it made that cavity there. So it makes a complete recessed cavity. So for this particular model with these gums and these teeth, when we go to print these separately, that tooth is just going to pop in there. Now, you could put a little bit of glue or some PLA gloop or something there to reinforce it. But essentially, that is just going to pop in there perfect and give us a seamless flush effect with that tooth going into the gum. So what I do here is I would start with the gum and I would hit delete. And then I would click on the tooth and go over here and go to save as. And we're going to save the tooth completely separately. Once the tooth is saved, we're going to hit our back button. It's going to bring us back to the gums and the teeth. We then select the tooth, delete the tooth. Then we can go ahead, click save as, and save the gum as its own file. And essentially, you know, with this particular file, we had, you can see how many things uh, I have organized here. Uh, left, bottom, back gums, left, bottom, back tooth. But I'm going to go ahead and open one of these files. 
and you can see that it saved that piece that we just had open as the left bottom back gum. And then if we want to open the left bottom back tooth, and it opens that and it gives us the tooth that will pop right into that gum. So it is a very cool feature. Like I said, it will not work on every single uh, STL. It depends how it's been uh, configured and meshed. I literally had to break it down each individual tooth with with each set of gums. Uh, but at the end, what it gave me is this right here, this awesome looking effect. I was able to print the gums in a separate green. I was able to print the teeth uh, in white. And then obviously the mask itself was printed in that olive green. And it gives a really, really cool effect. Now, even if you're not doing it in color and just sanding it, it's just going to be so much easier to break those down separately. Maybe you want to do those gums and the teeth, you know, in resin to get them as sharp and crisp as possible. Being able to break that file down, separate it, it's going to give you a lot more play uh, and just make things a lot cleaner and a lot better looking in the end. This will not necessarily work for every STL. So here I have this Mickey Mouse pumpkin uh, that I printed before and uh, it would be really cool if I could separate uh, some of these leaves and maybe some of these pumpkins or even the base uh, and print those separately but when you click the model here and it gets highlighted blue you'll notice that the ungroup does not pop up this has been meshed and sculpted in one solid piece so there is no way you can do that using Windows 3D Builder. You may be able to go in through Fusion or Blender, that's something a lot more advanced, and separate that, but as far as doing it something very simple where we would just go up and hit edit and you know subtract or remove, uh, you're not gonna be able to do that. You can do something very generic, and like let's say you wanted to split this for whatever reason, you can go ahead back up into that edit tool, uh, and you can separate it. So if you are trying to you know potentially crop and cut some things off, uh, you can go ahead, click the model, and then click split, and you can actually, you know, kind of crop it down, split it in half. So if it's some armor or something like that, and you want to print two different pieces, maybe it won't fit on your printer, and then plastic weld it together or something like that, uh, you can go ahead and do that. You click split. And we'll see here that it split it here. So you can crop uh, and do things like that. I will show you one uh, that it did work on here. So here's a Zamboni that has these extra wheels uh, that go on the Zamboni. Go ahead and click the Zamboni. You will notice it selects everything here. And then you can click on group. And then if we hit deselect, we can see clicking the items that it has separated all those. So you can print those. Uh, individually there. So these real intricate ones, that's a big help because you can print those separately at a nice fine layer height and with a little bit more infill. Definitely a cool little trick there. Once you have the files saved and separated, go ahead and load them into your slicer there. So it's got the prefabbed cavity there for the tooth to go in, so that, that tooth, and uh, you can just get that as flat as possible on the bottom, do your supports and whatnot. Worked out really great for the reptile mask, uh, and overall it's just a nice little trick to where if you are needing to, you know, modify an STL without going too crazy, it's something that's very easy to do with just a click of a button. It's got so many more things that you can do. I made a, uh, a toothbrush holder for my, uh, my one uh, power toothbrush, so if you want to just get real basic, maybe you want to get into sculpting uh, and you want something real simple, uh, you can do things, add uh, different objects, uh, make different shapes. You can see things like that. Uh, racks, holders, all kinds of stuff. You can add uh, lettering. You can emboss things. You know, so if you were wanting to add you know, any sort of lettering, maybe you're doing a trophy or a plaque or anything, you can go ahead and do that and it will add that on if we want to add you know, Darkwing Dad or whatever. Um, it's a really cool, really cool feature. Give you another example here. Select this. You can see here that uh, it doesn't allow you to click that ungroup option. So uh, if we were trying to maybe subtract and remove uh, these little nubs here the file is just not allowing you to do it but what you could do is uh, you could go in and you could insert a cylinder and all you have to do is basically make that cylinder to the same size and then you can actually go ahead and just subtract that piece 
and it can make holes. So if you want to add LEDs or whatever you want, in a sense, you are limited uh, to doing specific things in a certain way. But uh, once you get comfortable with the program, start messing around with it. Uh, there really are quite a few different things, uh, options and ways that you can you know, modify STLs reshape STLs, crop STLs. I recommend to go out, download it, play around with it, see what you come up with. Now that I've covered all that about Windows 3D Builder, let me wrap this video up and give you my final thoughts. All right, guys, well, there you have it. Uh, there is a look and some of the ins and outs of Windows 3D Builder. Uh, like I said, it is a very beginner savvy, user friendly program. Um, you know, it is limited in some aspects that I mentioned, but once you kind of get in there and start messing with some of the insert tools, uh, some of the cropping tools, some of the reshaping tools, you can do a lot of cool things. You can even take, you know, two STLs and combine them and group them together, mesh them together as one. I've taken like the top of a Spider-Man STL uh, from one file and taken a different uh, base that I like that had like spider webs or something on it. And I've been able to mesh them and combine them together. I personally love it. It's just a way that you can add your own touch to an STL and make it a little bit different. Uh, you're able to take something and be bland and ordinary, modify it, customize it, and turn it into something of your own. Really, really cool program. I hope you guys go out there, download it, check it out. And of course, give me some feedback. Let me know what you think about it. So there is a look and a quick breakdown of Windows 3D Builder. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did like the video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you have questions on anything, don't be afraid to go ahead and drop me a comment. You know I will hit you back. And of course, if you do enjoy all things 3D printing, cosplay, Marvel, Funko Pops, DIY, all the stuff I'm doing on the channel, go ahead, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, come back and see me. That's it for now, guys. We got a couple projects to finish up. So go out there, download that Windows 3D Builder, guys. Start modifying those STOs. Let me know how you like it. Give me a thumbs up. Drop me a comment. Click the subscribe button. Till next time, it's DW out. Later. Get out.